let's spend this last lecture uh, talking about political behavior. Um, these are activities that are not required as a part of one's formal role within the organization, but they influence or attempt to influence the distribution of advantages and disadvantages within the organization. And I will tell you, the more political your workplace, um, the less, less satisfied your employees will be. Um, and I'll give you reasons here of why that is. Um, there are a lot of individual uh, factors or factors contributing to political behavior. Uh, we know that not all companies are equal and not all companies treat everyone com equal within their organization. So high uh, it, our individual factors, uh, high self-monitors do better uh, in highly political situation. Uh, and when the mon self-monitors, they're the ones that know how to turn the on switch, off switch, uh, they, they know how to politic. Uh, they also know how to control their environment. So therefore, they're going to do better in an organization that's highly political. Uh, people that have an internal locus of control, and we've talked about that in previous weeks, whether you have an external or internal locus of control. If you feel like you're in charge of your fate and what's going on in your life, you're going to do better in a political environment. If you have a high need for power or a high uh, Machiavellian tendency, then you will do better. And then just a large investment within the organization, um, people that... Uh, Factors that contribute to it are more perceived job alternatives. Uh, and then the people that have that high expectation uh, for success. Now, organizational factors that contribute. <clears throat> if there's an existing pat if the existing pa existing pattern of resources is changing or even declining, then people will become more political because they're trying to hang on to their job. If people see an opportunity for promotion, then they will politic more within that organization. If there's a subjective performance criteria or unclear performance criteria, if you don't know how you're going to be uh, evaluated, then yes, there, you will be more political in your behavior. If there's low trust or role ambiguity, you don't know where you stand within that organization. Um, if there's zero-sum reward allocation practices, if there's not really a, a winner or a loser and you never know what footing you're on, then that creates uh, political behavior. If there's high pressure for performance, um, and then I'll tell you, if there's politicking by top management or self-serving, then that tends to uh, add factors to political behavior. So how do people respond to organizational politics? Well. For most people with modest political skills or those who are unwilling to play the politics game, uh, the outcomes are negative. And it includes low job satisfaction, increased anxiety, stress. They feel like they're losing ground to the politickers. Uh, they quit and they're demotivated. Uh, with this type of people, they don't know how to play the game. They don't understand it. They don't understand the rules. They're very confused. Uh, this is the group of people that I feel sorry for because they, they really do not understand what's going on. Um, it, it's moderated by the individual's understanding of who makes decisions, why they were selected. And when it's perceived as a threat, people will respond uh, with defensive behavior. And you've probably seen that in an organization where people feel like they're backed into a corner and where they really have nowhere to go. Uh, when we talk about defensive behavior, uh, it's avoiding action. They overconform. They they strictly interpret their responsibility. They'll say things like, "Oh, the rules will clearly state this," or "This is the way we've always done it." Um, they might pass the buck. They might transfer the responsibility for the execution of the task or decision to someone else. They play dumb. Uh, they avoid any unwanted task by they just plead ignorance or inability. Uh, stretching. They might prolong a task for so long that the, they appear to be occupied. Uh, they might turn a two-week job or task into a four-month job. And they stall. They just appear to be less uh, supported publicly while they do little or nothing else privately. Also, uh, they avoid blame. They, uh, they bluff. They say, well, you know, this is a nice way. They just cover their, their rear end. Uh, they describe, it describes a practice rigorously documenting activity. Uh, they play it safe. They avoid situations where they may reflect unfavorably. 
Uh, they only take on projects with high probability of success. They justify their behavior. They develop explanation that lessens their responsibility for a negative outcome. They scapegoat, so they point the finger at someone else. Uh, or external factors is not entirely blameworthy. Or they misrepresent, they manipulate information by distortion, embellishment, deception. And then they just avoid change. Uh, through prevention, they try to prevent a, a threatening change from occurring, and then just self-protection. Uh, they always, always act in their own best interest. So, let's talk about impression management. Um, and again, who engages in self-management or impression management? The, uh, our self-monitors, uh, because they know what to do uh, to uh, to make themselves look good. And they know, high self-monitors know, oh, it's time. Now's the time that I uh, need to be making the best impression. And, and this has really become prominent in the last few years. And you think about it, just in the United States, we spend a lot of money on impression management. It's the diets, the health clubs, uh, makeup, uh, sometimes even plastic surgery. And this is the process by which individuals attempt to control the impression others form of them. Uh, and this has included techniques or conformity, excuses, apologies, self-promotion, flattery, favors, uh, even association. We associate with the right people. So when we look at impression management, it works in interview success. So if you are in an interview situation, uh, this is where it really works. You use self-promotion and um, ingratiation. You look your best. Uh, you make sure that you're on point, that you have the best clothes on, and that you are convincing this company that they have got to hire you. If they don't hire you, then they are just going to go under. So that is where impression management works. Now, it does not work as well in performance evaluations. It's your yearly performance evaluation. Um, ingratiation works well, but self-promotion does not work well. well. Let's talk about the ethics of behaving politically. You do have some questions to consider. Um, what is the utility of engaging in the behavior? Um, how does the utility of engaging in this political behavior balance out any harm that it will do to others? And then, does this political activity conform to the standards of equity and justice? Um, I call it the sleep test. If you're able to make that decision, go home and sleep at night, then, you know, it may be an okay decision. But you've got to think also, how's it going to look? I used to say the newspaper, but nobody reads a newspaper anymore. But how's it going to look on the Internet? Uh, my mom always said that good news travels fast, but bad news travels faster. So always keep in mind just the ethics of behaving politically. Uh, it could come back uh, to bite you at some point in time. So let's think about implications for you as a manager. Uh, you have to accept that the political nature happens in organizations. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, no matter where you work, there will be a political nature to that organization and you really have to figure that out and whether or not you can live within that. Uh, that happens in religious organizations, that happens uh, in factories, that happens in restaurants, uh, no matter where you work, there will be a political nature of that organization. Know that you can increase your power uh, by acquiring the basis of power that are most useful, expert. Uh, be an expert within your organization and make sure that you have skills that only you have uh, and that they need you and need to keep you around. Or referent power, where people admire you and want to be like you. Um, use the power tactics that are most effective, consultation, inspirational appeal. Again, that people will want to come to you to ask you your opinion or they'll want to be like you. And then um, avoid tactics that tend to backfire, and that's coercion. Uh, people will follow you for a period of time, um, and then they, they overthrow, <laughs> and there are coup attempts, or they uh, mo remove you from power. All right, this completes my series of lectures for this class. Uh, again, if you have any questions, give me, uh, shoot me out an email at lpowell at uu.edu.